Hi everybody, it's Tracy from Downward Dog Rising and tonight I'm going to give you some tips to help you. It's um, to help you if you have disc herniations either in your neck or your low back that give you pain and it's just a couple things that you can do to help stabilize yourself so that you feel better, so that you can work, or you could do a little workout that's more strenuous. So this is kind of like a little pre-workout to help you get ready so that you can work out or you can go to work or just feel like you can move around and be pain-free. So we're gonna decompress your neck and then we're gonna try to stabilize your low back, your lumbar spine. So if you deal with chronic pain or feeling tense in the neck or the back. This is something that's going to benefit you. And I'll start you off with something for your neck first, and then we'll go to the low back area. And then the only thing that I request is that you know if you're fused in your back. Like if you've ever had fusion surgery where your back has a rod in it to hold it together or rods, like you're not going to want to do things to like pull it apart. So you have to know that about yourself. And then when you have herniations, flexion is like a forward motion that puts more stress on the herniation. So you want to be careful about certain things that you do because you don't want to push the disc out the backside. Like if the spine goes forward, the space in between each vertebra that pushes the disc backwards. So neutral is always a good rule of thumb. And then that's about it. All right, okay, let's get started. So just sit in Sukhasana in your easy pose. So this is Sukhasana, easy pose. If this is uncomfortable on your hips or your low back, I'm gonna grab a yoga block real quick. So if this was uncomfortable, you would go like this and you would prop yourself this way. You would just sit up and then by lifting your hips and your pelvis up, all of a sudden that just bought you some space for your hip flexors and it also bought you some space for your low back. And then you could just kind of sit and feel like you can just relax and not feel like you're all tense fighting your body trying to stay upright. So. That's key, you wanna be comfortable. And then basically, for the neck, I'm gonna have you do something just to bring blood flow to the shoulders. You're gonna inhale, shrug shoulders to ears, exhale, release hands away. So let the fingertips just go. You wanna release tension out of the fingers. So you just inhale, shrug up. Exhale, release away. You just shrug shoulders to ears, release the tension. Exhale, release away. Good, inhale, shrug up. Exhale, release away. And inhale for four, release tension through the fingertips. Inhale for three and two, release the tension through the fingertips. Last one, inhale and exhale. Awesome. Then next one, I'm gonna do it from the side. So your shoulders go up and then they roll down back away from the ears because we ideally want our shoulders in alignment with the ears. We don't want them forward. So you go up, down, back. We wanna do the elevation, the depression of the shoulders. So we're just gonna lift, roll up, down, back away from the ears, lift, up, down, back away from the ears. Three more, lift and down back, two more, down back, and last one, up, down, back, away from your Good. This next one, your anchor point is going to be your shoulder here. So what you do, you stretch your arm long, this part stays down, and we move in really tiny increments when dealing with our neck, because we don't want to overstretch and then hurt ourselves. So this is the anchor point, this is my left shoulder, my, it's your right if you're facing me. I'm gonna have you keep this shoulder down and then what you do, you tilt this ear down towards the right shoulder and then you just feel that stretch there, that length. 
You feel the openness here across your collarbone. And you just breathe. You breathe into the side of your neck. Softly come up. Then you take this arm and then you're just gonna relax this shoulder down away. And then what do you do? You just really gently, lightly allow this opposite ear to go towards your shoulder as this arm stays down and back. So this is your anchor point. So this is what you would do just to start to stretch the side of the neck. We have a muscle sternocleidomastoid. And then when we're really tense and stressed, um, we end up overusing our upper traps and it really tightens up our neck and shoulders. Our jaw gets tight too. Slowly come back up. Okay, now if you wanna deepen the stretch you just did and your shoulder's okay with this, you would, could take your arm behind your back. That, be, makes, that makes the anchor point even stronger. Shoulder down and back. And then you would just lightly tilt ear to shoulder, stretching side of neck. And then ever so gently, you would start to turn your head looking under side of bent elbow, looking towards armpit. And that just shifts the stretch a little bit more to the side rear of the neck. And then you just breathe, take a couple of breaths here. Breathing in, breathing out, stretch. You could stay longer than I stay here. This feels good to you, stay here for a few more breaths. And then you just release then as long as it doesn't hurt the shoulder. If you have rotator cuff issues, maybe it hurts the shoulder to take your arm behind your back that way. So just be safe. And then you take the other hand and you gently just go to side of bent elbow. You're gonna feel the collarbone wide, the side of the neck stretch. And then you just breathe. And then maybe you'll just turn, look under the armpit, feel the side of the neck elongate. You're deepening the stretch. It's traveling more towards the rear of the neck, down the side to the rear. Breathing in, breathing out, looking under the armpit, breathing in, breathing out. All right, gently come back to the center. And then we're just gonna let that arm go. Okay, so now I'm gonna have you come down to the mat and I'm gonna have you do it when you're lying on your back and then I'll show you what it is that I'm gonna have you do. So we're gonna release tension in your occiput, that's at the base of your skull. And sometimes you'll hear little pops or cracks and when it goes away, that tension's released. We're also gonna release tension in your second cervical vertebra. The first cervical vertebra is called the atlas the second cervical vertebra is called the axis and it's that second vertebra that really helps us with rotation so when you're on your back i'll have you do it in a sec we'll do a chin nod and it's small because you wouldn't actually take your head off the floor you would tilt your chin up and then you would tilt your chin down you'd relax your mouth jaw facial muscles so i'll show you when we get down to our mat and the next one would be your nose circles. That takes you into that axis, that second cervical vertebra. So basically you'd be lying on your mat. You would take the tip of your nose to the ceiling. And notice I'm not doing a huge head circle. I'm just like reaching with the tip of my nose and I'm making these little circles. And then you're gonna feel it down the sides of the neck under the ear lobes. So we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna show you what you can do to create space in your neck. So from the side, if you've seen like a bird walking outside, sometimes when a bird walks, it's, its head goes forward like that as it takes steps. Our goal is not to like make her chin go forward like a bird. I don't want you to look like that at all. The goal is just to start wherever your head and neck are naturally. And then what you do, you your eye gaze is straight and you just pull the chin in, it's small, you pull the chin in to the front of the neck, and then that way you open the space on the opposite side in the vertebra. So your head's neutral, you just draw the chin in, and then release. So you're just gonna draw the chin in, and then release. Draw the chin in, release. From the front, it looks like this. You just draw the chin in, release. Draw the chin in, 
release. You're gonna feel that right at the back of the head. Draw the chin in and then release. So now take it down to your mat and then from your mat, go ahead and do those chin nods and no circles with me. So we're just going to take it all the way down to our mat. And here comes your chin nod. It's small. It's a small motion. You just tilt your chin up, tilt your chin down, up, and down. Relax your mouth. Relax the jaw. Relax your facial, mu facial muscles. Up, down. Basically, basically, think of going to the back of your skull, right behind the nose, the opposite side of your head, back of skull. That's your occiput. So you're just going to tilt up, and then you're going to tilt down. All right. Just kind of creating a little space in there. Okay. Bring head back neutral. Now, tip of nose. Make these little baby circles. Feel that under ear lobes, feel length down sides of neck and reverse. Little circles the opposite way. Of course you back away if you feel pain somewhere, then back out of it and discontinue. Just use common sense. All right, return center. Okay, now I'm going to make room in your thoracic spine that's right between your two shoulder blades. So. I need to rest my voice. I talk too much during the day, so I lose my voice by night. Um, I'm gonna try to rest my voice more soon. Okay, we're gonna let our shoulder blades lift up off the mat. We're doing protraction, retraction of our scapula, our two shoulder blades right now. So your elbows are straight, your shoulder blades lift off the mat, and then they reconnect. I want you to feel some space mid-back in between your two shoulder blades. That's your thoracic spine. So we just created space in your cervical spine. Now we're making room in your thoracic spine. You could do this pre-workout session just to lubricate your joints, release tension out of the joints, and get some blood flow, and it'll help facilitate a workout, a better workout. All right. Now we're going to add on to our shoulder blade slaps. We're going to do something called screwing in the light bulb. And if you're wondering where does this come from, Physical Mind Institute is a Pilates certifying studio. They've been around a long time certifying since the 1990s, and they came up with pre-Pilates awareness exercises to bring you into your body. So that's where I learned these from. So if you lift up, you're going to rotate thumbs out, screw in the light bulb, rotate thumbs in, and then you just pull the blades down. So you go up, out, in, down. Eric Franklin, he's from Switzerland, and he does a lot of work. Liberate the shoulders and neck. He has books out, and so he does a lot with bone rhythms. If you ever are interested, check out Eric Franklin and his method. Up and out, screw in the light bulb. Screw in the light bulb. Out, in, and down. Up and out. Now you're driving your arm bone, your humerus bone, deeper into your shoulder socket, your glenoid fossa. Sometimes we have issues because our arm bone doesn't go deep into the socket, and then whenever you go to do motion, that arm bone is popping up, and then you can't isolate, you can't stabilize the blades in your back because the arm bone is already sticking up out of the socket. So it creates a movement pattern that's unnatural. Okay, so once you do that, you just created some space. You got your arm bones sunk in deep into the sockets. They connect across shoulder blades and your back. Now you just float the arms down by your side, stretching arms long. I'm gonna have you do one more thing just to get into your middle back between the two blades. Now try rotating your palms to the sky. Feel collarbones open wide across your chest. Let the fingertips start to reach long. So basically, you inhale, feel head lengthen away from your tailbone. Now just stretch your fingertips towards the heels. Feel how the front of the shoulder drops even down more away from the ears, and your collarbones widen across the chest. And you'll feel some fibers happening, turning on in between the shoulder blades, middle back. 
So then think of an upside down triangle. Your two shoulders are two points of the triangle and then the point going down the center, the middle and the lower part of that point, we're trying to activate rather than our upper area. That's always activated. So then stretch arms long, inhale. Create openness across collarbones. Exhale, stretch fingers towards heels and release. Breathing in. Exhale, you're gonna stretch fingers down. Keep arms relaxed on your mat and release three more inhale chest opens now exhale stretch fingers long feel the shoulders move away from the ears two more inhale chest is open exhale reach fingers long one more time inhale chest is open exhale reach fingers long so you could do all this before bridging and then that way you don't bridge and put all your weight in your neck. Then you have awareness when you do a bridge that you're not just putting all the pressure in your cervical spine, neck vertebra. So then now we're going to move down into your um, lumbar spine. So from the navel to the pubic bone, we're going to do something called a, a not a bridge. We're going to do something called pelvic clock. 12 o'clock is navel six o'clock is pubic bone and then anatomically you have a neutral spine when these two asis your bones of your hips these two hip bones the anterior superior iliac spine they face straight up to the sky if they face back a little bit rolling towards navel that's a posterior pelvic tilt that actually imprints your spine against the mat and then if you tilt your hip bones forward towards your pubic bone, that arches your back off the mat. We're going to call this an anterior pelvic tilt because your pelvis is tilting in anteriorly away from the mat. And here's posteriorly, it rolls into the mat. So now if we do a pelvic a clock, 12 o'clock is here, 6 o'clock is here. I want you to go a little deeper. And rather than just thinking of the bones of the pelvis shifting, moving back, moving forward, now I want you to go into your body, abdominals, they actually pull in. You can pull in, zip up from pubic bone to navel, pelvic floor lifts. You could also feel like your abdominals just pulling into your back. So whenever those abdominals tighten in, in towards your spine, that's when you tilt and you exhale deeply. And we shouldn't even have our glutes active when we're doing this part. Glutes are activated when you bridge. But here, without over gripping your glutes, you should be able to just use your pelvis, activate those muscles, peel back. This is going to give your low spine a warm up as well as activate the core to help support you when you're working out. Exhale, peel back. Inhale, roll forward. Exhale, scoop in. Inhale, roll forward. Three more. Exhale, peel back. Inhale. Now use those intrinsic abdominal muscles to do the work. And one more time. Then you co-contract the muscles, paraspinal muscles, opposite side. Return neutral. Neutral is when your two hip bones are in the same plane of alignment as your pubic bone. Okay, next. Your two hip bones or three o'clock and nine o'clock on the face of a clock. So you have two, three o'clock, nine o'clock, face of a clock. You draw a straight line across. We're gonna get into our obliques a little bit and different muscles in our abdominals. We have a transversus abdominis. Think of a belt horizontally narrowing across your two hip bones. Just visualize a belt tightening across. And you could probably feel it right away, like pulling straight across hip bone to hip bone. Tighten that belt across. Now, section your pelvis into two halves, a left half and a right half. And then what I want you to do, one half stays down as one half lifts off the mat. And you're probably wondering, what is she talking about? Well, if your pelvis was a bowl full of water and you had to slosh the water half side to side, or if you had a marble that was on the left hip bone, left hip bone, would be nine o'clock on the face of a clock. Three o'clock would be the right one. So say you went to slash water from left half to right or from three, 
from nine to three, you would elevate the left hip, but the right hip stays down. You would go to the left side of the navel, pull those muscles inward into the back of the spine like a guide wire, and just pull the other half of your pelvis into the mat. You keep a straight line across the two hips. One hip goes up, and then you have to pull like a guide wire. The hip comes down. You're gonna feel something on the low side of the back, pulling, working, engaging, and then your back feels like it opens up a little bit. So you lift up, and then you lower down. You elevate, keeping one hip down, then you lower. Okay, now we're gonna go into your, that was nine o'clock lifting, now we're gonna do the three o'clock. The three o'clock, we wanna make sure we keep length between rib cage, hip bones, the three lifts up, and then the three goes down. So again, you have to pull, pull, pull into the low back. You lift one hip up, and then you lower the hip down. The hip lifts up, you roll the marble either from right to left, or you slosh the water in your pelvis. One half of the pelvis is lifted, and then you have to really pull those muscles in to bring it down. Inhale, it goes up. Exhale, it comes down. So we wanna be able to keep our hips, our legs relatively stable as we move our pelvis. There is something that can happen. We could hip hinge and have our quadratus lumborum and our muscle, our muscle and our back take over. And then when that happens, it makes your back really tight on one side. It's a hip hiker. If you could keep your two hips straight and level, that's wonderful and that's our goal. Say one hip goes higher than the other and you feel compression. What you would do, you would take your thumb to the end of your ribs, you would place your index finger or middle finger on your hip bone and you would try to widen that gap in there. The space, the soft tissue between your rib and your hip, you try to increase the distance and then while you keep that space open, can you lift the hip up, roll the marble over, and then work, 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 go to the side of the navel, pull the pelvis down again. So you lift, pull the pelvis down again. You're trying to get different areas to wake up, and they have to reach through the body. And then when you do a pelvic clock, you could actually use all the numbers of the clock. You could do a circle where your pelvis stays stable. I mean, your legs stay stable. Like when you cha-cha, your pelvis moves. But here, we're gonna do, we're gonna do legs stable and just our pelvis moves. So what I mean by that, if you do the left hip, that's nine o'clock, nine o'clock, then do navel 12, then do three, and then do six, nine, 12, 3, 6, 9, and 12, 3, and 6. So see if you could smooth that out. 9 and 12, 3, and 6. 9, 12, 3, 6. 9 and 12, 3, 6. So you're going to do these little rotations. 9 and 12, 3, and 6. 9, 12, 3, 6. Okay, now we're going to go the other way. This is 3. So we go 3. Three, then we go 12, then we go nine, then we go six. This way it's harder for me for whatever reason. Sometimes one side's more dominant, it's easier for us to connect to. So I'm gonna do three and six. Sorry, I'm getting myself mixed up. 12 is navel. Three and 12, nine, six. Three, 12, and I'm trying to draw my abdominal wall really tight to actually move the pelvis. Three. 12, 9, 6. I'm getting little cracks as things adjust. So you do 3 and 12, 9 and 6. Okay, so you have all these numbers in between those four points. So then the question is, can you like target each section? Like can you roll through and actually do the numbers on the clock? And then try the other way now. Try to hit more of the numbers on the clock. Use your core, try to hit more numbers on the clock. 
So we try to move the pelvis while stabilizing the legs stable. All right, that's enough because it's intense. It's like mental gymnastics. So try to move all those intrinsic small muscles in there. And just take a deep inhale in between your two shoulder blades. Release. Okay, so now this is going to feel really good. We're going to keep our pelvis stable on the mat. We're going to just, now the pelvis doesn't move. Now we're just going to do knee stirs where our pelvis is stabilized. You tighten your core in. Transversus abdominis, pull three o'clock, nine o'clock together. Your two hip bones pull together. Now your legs just stir inside your hip sockets. Your core tightens into your spine. Your spine is long on the mat. And then just feel how the abdominal tones really activated, pulling into your spine. Now reverse so your legs can move freely without the pelvis moving. Now we've stabilized your pelvis because your core is working deeply, your spine is lengthened into the mat, and then this is what gives your core and your back strength. You're stabilizing lumbar spine. So if you have disc issues, this is really gonna help your low back. And then I'm gonna give you another example. All right, lift up your leg. Now, allow your leg, you're holding your kneecap. Now just allow that leg to go really heavy in your arm. So it's like your arm is gonna control your leg now. We want this femur bone, that crease, to go really deep into your hip joint, the acetabulum. So what I want you to do here, your leg is gonna go kind of like, you're not gonna control from the leg, you're gonna use the arm to do it. And then just the, leg, the arm's gonna get heavy right here. And you're just gonna do a couple little rotations here, like control, use your arm without moving your pelvis, and just allow that leg to sink deeper into the socket. Inhale, exhale, now reverse. Just be aware of your body. Can you keep your pelvis still as you move your leg? Tighten in your core. Good. You're gonna feel free in your hip after this. All right. Now just take that leg down to the mat for a second as I kick things. So this is gonna feel open here. Maybe take the other leg down. This is gonna feel more open and spacious. Your low back's gonna feel more open, more grounded into the mat, closer to the mat. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other leg. You're just gonna lift up the knee. You're gonna let that leg just go really heavy in your hand. So your leg is heavy. Your spine is long in the mat. So now your arm is, use, is doing the work. Your arm is working to hold that leg and you're gonna stir it. Keep your hips stable. So you're gonna guide the leg. Guide the leg. So it's a different feeling of over gripping. You're just letting it go. Feel the crease in the hip, feel that differentiation. Tighten the core into your back. And two. Good, one more. Feel that differentiation and gently come in. Maybe take that leg down. It's gonna feel open in the front as I kick things. All right, just stretch apart for a second. Feel the length through the front of those hip flexors. They actually won't be gripped now, gripping. You'll actually feel the length. The low back comes closer to the mat. It's going to feel really good to you. So that's something that you could do to help your spine. Now I'm going to have you do a bridge for spinal stability, meaning you're going to, you don't want your heels all the way to your glutes, <clears throat> and you don't want your heels way out. So you want to be in a good position, knees over second toes, pull those two hip bones together, collarbones wide, avoid putting weight in your neck. So you just breathe in. And then I want you to stretch your tailbone long. When you're in the right spot, your chest feels like it opens up across here and you feel like space in the front of the collarbones. And then you just feel like that low back stretches away. 
Your knees, you don't want the knees to splay outward. Keep the knees in. Stretch hips to sky, feel glutes engage. And then you just set your pelvis straight back to the mat. So this is really good for your low back. If you have disc issues, if you have osteoporosis, you'd be careful of how much body pressure you're putting. You might just do like a little bridge here so you don't put too much weight in that thoracic spine. Exhale. Inhale down. Keep pelvis stable. Your hip bones lengthen. Feel the front of those thighs lengthen. Chest is open. Glutes are engaged. Straight back to mat. Eight more. Scoop your core tight. If your hamstrings cramp, your glutes need to activate first, then hamstrings, and go down the chain. Press all four corners of your feet into the mat. Open this across shoulders, chest, and lower down. And lift, tighten your core to your back, chest open, lower down. Inhale, exhale, chest open, stretch tailbone long, lower down. Three more, lift up pelvis, stretch tailbone long, lower down, your core is engaged. Two more, lifting up and lowering down. One more, lifting up, lowering down. Hug in, release. Now, if lifting your head and neck is contraindicated for you, you have herniated discs, you have osteoporosis, well then, you could still work your core by doing a head float. A head float can strengthen your neck, and then you're not actually gonna curl up like that. You're gonna keep your elbows wide, and you're gonna feel your entire spine lengthen on the mat, you cradle your head with your hands so your elbows are wide. And then you're really going really deep into your core. Pull those muscles into your spine. And then basically float your head off the mat. Elbows stay wide. You're just floating your head up. Feel those core muscles and then lower down. So you just float up without flexing your spine. Tighten in. Work those core muscles. Pull them really deeply in and down. You could even make it harder by maybe hovering your foot like an inch off the mat. As you do your head float, feel the core engage and down. Lift the foot, float up without curling and down. Try six more, float up and down. So really scoop in. When you do that baby lift, you're really tightening in. And five, and four, and three, two more, last one. All right, good job. And then I'm gonna have you just stretch out your back, do a little cactus. Your shoulder blades stay on the mat and you slowly, so, if you have disc herniations, avoid rotating your, your pelvis off the mat. You would keep your tailbone down and maybe just go this far. If there's no pain, you're gonna feel a stretch here in the front of the hip flexor. You're gonna feel a stretch along the whole side of your spine and ribs. Only go to what's, where it's comfortable for you. Avoid over twisting. Sometimes you just have to keep neutral and not twist your spine at all. So you would keep the back and the sits bones on the mat and you would just do a little bit and breathe into the side of your rib cage. So just breathe in, breathe out, feel space between rib cage, hip bone. Take a few more deep inhales here. Feel the side of your waist elongate. And if this is too much, modify by doing it like this. Tailbone stays down and do a tiny knee sway and you would just breathe to the side of the ribs opposite to the side of the which side the knee swayed to. Sometimes I can't talk at night so if I don't make sense don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully I make sense. All right come back center and then you would crisscross the opposite knee over the ankle and then if you can rotate your spine a little bit you don't have hardware holding it together. You're allowed to do this. You would go sideways, keeping both shoulders on the mat, cactus the arms, and just let the whole side stretch. Breathing in, breathing out. 
Breathing in, breathing out. Just doing a little softer spinal twist. And then if you can't do any spinal twists whatsoever, this is what you're gonna do. Your knees are bent and you just softly allow your knees just to go a little bit off to one side. And then you would just stay here and breathe on this side and just be breathing on this side right here, opening the gap between the rib and the hip as you breathe. Inhaling and exhaling, just a little bit of a sway. All right, gently come back center. And then I'm gonna have you turn to your side. And then that's it for today. So you did some spinal stability work and you did some decompression work, so good for you. And then you should just feel like um, a, little more, a little more pliable, meaning like if everything's achy and stiff and tense, like right now your low back should feel pretty free, your neck should feel better, your neck should feel more free. And then what you could do, as long as you don't have um, rotator cuff tears, I'm gonna have you do a little shoulder stretch, Garudasana, which is eagle arms. So what you would do, remember, avoid if, here's your modification. Take hand to opposite shoulder, keep shoulders out of ears, and just push the arm slightly across to get into that medial deltoid center part of the shoulder. So you would just do that, and then you would do that to the other side. You'd keep the shoulder down away from your ear, just press across, get a little stretch in the middle part of your shoulder. And then if you want to do your eagle arms, you would take the right arm on the bottom, left arm on the top. You would bring your hands together and then gently just float the arms up. And let's take a couple deep inhales, deep exhales here, breathing in, breathing out. Feel a stretch across your upper mid back, breathing in, breathing out. And let's just do one more like that, breathing in, breathing out. Awesome. Undo. Now you just do the left arm on the bottom. The palms come together, and then you're just going to float the arms up and breathing in, breathing out. Get that nice stretch across that upper mid back, breathing in and breathing out. Inhale and exhale, getting into your lung meridian too, breathing in, lung and heart meridian, breathing out. And one more time, inhale and exhale and gently release all right and there you have it some decompression work and a little bit of spinal stability work so thank you so much for joining me everyone i hope this helped all right i'll be back i'm gonna rest my voice tomorrow i'm working like all day so after tomorrow i'm just gonna come home and rest so but i'll be back this week all right okay bye i'm gonna try to get an outdoor video hopefully soon. I love going outdoors. It's so much fun. So thank you, everybody. Peace. And I'll be back when I can. Okay. Thanks for supporting my channel. I appreciate you all. Love you. Bye.